Now I'm going to cover and address reactions of esters. As you can well imagine, if we treat an ester with water and acid, we can displace the OCH3 with an OH. I'm not going to show the mechanism for this. It is very similar to the mechanisms we've shown in the past, but this HCl acts as a catalyst to protonate oxygens and form better leaving groups than we would otherwise have. I consult you guys to look at this in your book. Once again, we can imagine the, o, uh, the oxygen lone pairs coming in, and this, the electrons rearranging and then closing back down and kicking off this OCH3 as a leaving group. It gets protonated in this, under these acidic conditions, thereby forming an, a, uh, an alcohol as a product. This type of reaction, where I form a carboxylic acid from an ester, is called a hydrolysis reaction. I can also displace the O uh, alkyl group in an ester uh, with a nitrogen forming an amide. Reaction conditions or mechanisms very similar. Electrons on the nitrogen come in, electrons go up, electrons go down, and then kick off this ethoxy group. It steals a proton back from the nitrogen to neutralize its positive charge, thereby giving me ethanol as a byproduct. We can convert some esters into different esters as well. If I take an ester of this type and incubate it with a large amount of this alcohol and catalytic acid, lone pairs on this alcohol oxygen will come in, electrons go up, electrons go down, and eventually displace this OCH3 as an alcohol leaving group. This is a way of converting one ester into a different ester. This kind of reaction is called a transesterification we can also convert carboxylic acids into acid chlorides. Now this might blow your mind. Maybe by this stage you're asleep, I'm not sure, but it blows my mind initially, simply because I've taught you earlier that a chlorine is a better leaving group than an OH. Hence, you shouldn't ever be able to replace an OH with a chlorine, right? Well, as it turns out, you can do that using this reaction, uh, or this uh, reagent, thionyl chloride, which I like to call affectionately SOCL2. SOCL2 actually goes through a reaction mechanism highlighted in here to convert the OH into a better leaving group than a chloride. Hence the chloride's able to then come up and displace that uh, leaving group. Thus you can take a carboxylic acid and you can convert the OH into a Cl if you treat it with SOCL2. For this particular reaction, I am not going to require you guys to know the mechanism. I do, however, want you to know the conditions to convert a carboxylic acid into an acid chloride. And remember, those conditions are SOCL2. I can also convert a carboxylic acid into an ester. If I take a carboxylic acid and treat it with an excess amount of alcohol and some acid catalyst, I can displace the OH for my O alkyl group. Thus, I've converted benzoic acid here into ethyl benzoate. This type of reaction, the conversion of a carboxylic acid into an ester under these conditions, is called a Fischer esterification. A way of converting a carboxylic acid into an amide that is a little bit more efficient and easier is by incubating the carboxylic acid with this reagent called DCC. I am not going to require you guys to know the mechanism of this reaction at all. I just want you to understand that DCC does make an OH a wicked good leaving group. Thus, it makes it so that an amine can come in and kick off that OH even faster and better than it normally would. When we compare this with the amide formation covered a few slides ago, you incubate a carboxylic acid with DCC in amine, you can typically form an amide under room temperature very, very easily. If you use just an amine by itself with catalytic acid, you generally have to heat it up. So DCC is a great reagent for making an OH a better leaving group and enabling you to take a carboxylic acid and convert it into an amide. 
You can also convert amides back into carboxylic acids. Now, as I mentioned, an NH2 is actually a worse leaving group than an OH. So it's pretty hard to have an OH come in here and kick off an NH2. The only way that you can really do this is by treating it with an excessive amount of acid or base with water as the solvent and heating the holy crap out of it. That way you can displace the NH2 with an OH forming a carboxylic acid and releasing ammonia as a gas. Here's a great example of this. <coughs> I could take N-methylbenzamide, shown here, incubate it with ethanol, heat the snot out of it with HCl, and form this, ethyl benzoate. This is another reaction that follows a mechanism that's very different from the ones that we've shown so far. I'm not going to require you to know the mechanism for this reaction. I do, however, want you to know the conditions. I can take an amide and convert it into a nitrile by incubating it under warm conditions with P2O5, which is phosphorus pentoxide. That's a very, very cool way of forming a nitrile. With that said, I now am going to conclude by sharing uh, a lecture problem with you guys. I want you to predict the products of each of the following nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions. I'm not going to cover the answers in this presentation for you, but I hope that you guys will at least do your best to try and figure out the answers to this, these questions. If you have any questions, we can talk about them later in class. So now we'll finish with a recap of all of the carbonyl reactions that we've learned so far in this chapter. First, if we take an acid chloride and treat it with water, we can hydrolyze the chlorine, replacing it with a hydroxyl group to make carboxylic acid. Analogous treatment with alcohol forms esters. Treatment with ammonia or other amines can make amides. And treatment with an acetate comes in, electrons go up, down, kick off the chloride to form an acid and hydride. Similarly, we can do various reactions with acid and hydrides, which is the next most reactive uh, carbonyl bearing substance in the sequence. We clip off the acetate leaving group with water, we get carboxylic acids. With alcohol, we get esters. With amines, we get amides. We can also do reactions with esters, which are the next most reactive species in the sequence. We can hydrolyze off the uh, uh, alkoxide group with water to form carboxylic acids, with the means to form amides, and with other alcohols to form different esters. This sequence is called a transesterification catalyzed by acid. Here are the reactions of carboxylic acids. If I treat them with an alcohol, catalytic acid, I can form an ester. This process is called Fischer esterification. I can convert the hydroxyl group into chlorine using thionyl chloride or SOCL2. And I can replace the OH with an amine group, thereby forming an amide by treatment with an amine, uh, various amines of choice, and this reaction, DCC. I'm not going to require you to know the mechanism of that. I will only briefly say that DCC helps convert the OH into a better leaving group. Here are the reactions of amides, which are some of the least reactive species in the sequence, because an NH- is a much poorer leaving group than an O- or a Cl-. But if we heat the holy snot out of an amide using water, we can replace the NH2 with an OH, converting it into a carboxyl acid. If we treat it with this dehydrating reagent, P2O5, phosphorus pentoxide, it will convert the amide into this species, a nitrile. Or if we heat the holy snot out of the amide with an alcohol, we can form an ester from it. That brings us to the end of this section of Chapter 17, coverage of carboxylic acids and their derivatives and their reactions. I hope that you've had as wonderful and enjoyable of a time as I have. I'll see you in our next video.